Come and listen to a story about a man named Jed. The poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. driving through that alley. What was you doing driving in the alley? I'd like to see you take this wide load through downtown traffic. I'll take the wash back just as soon as I get the tree inside. Well, I'll find Granny and see exactly where she wants it. Well, Granny, guess we'll be back any minute with our tree. I know it. In a few days, Christmas will be on us. Yeah. The carolers are coming around every night. The houses is being decorated with pretty lights. Folks are getting presents, trimming trees, and I ain't never been so miserable in my whole life. <laughs> hey, where's your Christmas spirit? That's what I like to know. I've been sitting here rocking all morning, waiting for it to hit me. Don't you feel Christmassy at all? Oh, I get a tingle now and then. <laughs> but it lasts as long as a snowflake on a hot griddle. <laughs> oh, here you are. Jethro's back. What should he do with the tree? Climb it. Hey. Uncle Jed! Uncle Jed, come quick. We got trouble. A wind got a tree too big to go through the front door. <laughs> Jethro, turn it in, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Good thinking. <laughs> That's really using your head. <laughs> you know, Uncle Jed, for an uneducated man, you're real smart. Thanks, boy. <laughs> Granny, come see the Christmas tree. If an ed don't get your spirits up, nothing will. It ain't no use, child. Please, come take a look. Well, I suppose it's worth a try. Enough of this. Your chin gets any lower, you'll be tripping over it. So, I'm starting to get a little gloom in my cell. Hey, I know what'll cheer us up. Let's go out in the kitchen and eat some fruitcake. Oh, I ought to be mule kick for being such a wet blanket. But, but it just don't feel like Christmas out here. To tell you the truth, something's been missing for me, too, and I think I know what it is. Yeah, snow on the ground, frost on the windows, and eating fruitcake. And the smell of winter in the air. The sound of sleigh bells. And eating fruitcake? <laughs> Remember back home, that time we surprised Silas Meek by cutting up all his firewood? Yeah. yeah. That was a good Christmas. And remember that time when we hired out and done chores and sold eggs so as we could buy a new set of teeth for the widow Crabtree? <laughs> <laughs> Do I? That was the first time in 19 years that she was able to chew her Christmas dinner. <laughs> that was fun. I remember that. Oh, good time. And then after that, every year, we'd pick out somebody and see that they had a Merry Christmas. Well, that's what we're missing out here. But what are we waiting for? Let's pick someone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, there's one person in Beverly Hills that could stand to show a Christmas spirit more than anybody I know, and I think you all know who it is. Jane Hathaway. John Cushy. Little Farquhar. I mean, Miss Drysdale. Miss Drysdale. Miss Drysdale. Why, she can't stand the sight of us. I know, but if we help it along, the holiday spirit might just thaw her out. Why, even the ornery folks wears a smile at Christmas. 
I can't stand those crude, ignorant, despicable hillbillies one day longer. <laughs> it's Christmas. As a gift, why don't you give the Clampets a nice, long vacation in some tropical retreat? Like Devil's Island. <laughs> Forget it. The Clampets are staying right here. Oh, please. Help me get rid of them for the holidays at least. Margaret, this is the season to be with friends. And the Clampets are my closest, dearest, warmest savings account. You're impossible. All you care about is making money. So what are you trying to do with that Christmas rummage sale of yours? That's different. The proceeds are to go to underprivileged families over in Brentwood. Brentwood? Why, half of them don't even make 25000 a year. Margaret, I'm busy. Go rummage. <laughs> Just be sure you get my box of castaways to the sale today. Me? Well, it's the least you can do. You were too cheap to donate any of your old clothes. I don't have any old clothes. Oh, what about that old seersucker suit hanging in the closet? That's not old. I bought that in 1948. It's hopelessly out of style. You forgot I had it modernized. Oh, yes. And now I remember. What you did with those wide lapels they cut off. So? They happen to make a very nice pair of seersucker socks. <laughs> I sure can't figure what to give Ms. Dreddy. Me neither. I will. Just let me think a minute. If you wait till I get my mind reading potion to working, I'll tell you what Ms. Drysdale wants more than anything in the world. Scientific and exact. <laughs> Whilst we're waiting, read off that list of things we thought of already. Let's see. Possible gifts for Ms. Drysdale. Uncle Jed, you thought of a good book or something nice to wear. Get it, fool. <laughs> what are our teeth is? Uh, Ellie done thought of a small milking goat or some goldfish. All right. If you're all so determined to know what Ms. Drysdale wants, my mind reading potion will tell you what she really wants. Well, Granny, aren't you for the idea? Oh, I'm for it. But getting some friendly out of her with presents is going to be harder than getting good sense out of a turkey. <laughs> I got your table all set up outside for you, Granny, just like you want it. Good. Granny, I don't recollect hearing about your mind reading potion till today. Of course she ain't. Experimental, top secret. Why, if this was to fall into the wrong hands, I shudder to think what. <laughs> Stand back. Mine reading potion, smoky and green, deepest dark secret never been seen. Come up and out of your faraway haunts and tell us the present Miss Drysdale wants. You getting anything, Granny? The reception ain't so good. <laughs> Wait, something's coming through. What is it? A new churn? No. It's a corset. <laughs> no. Wait. I see it. Clear as a bell. It's shoes. She wants new shoes. Well, Granny, them's your shoes. Your potion done that through the table. <laughs> can always give her that good swift kick. <laughs> I have called every trucking firm in the directory. The least any of them will haul your wife's rummage to the sale for is five dollars. Five dollars? That's an outrage. <laughs> say, say, if if you could make enough trips in your car. I'm sorry, <laughs> Chief. No. Oh, please, Miss Hathaway. Where's that old holiday spirit? All right. I'll strike a bargain with you. I'll pick up your wife's old clothes if you'll have a Christmas party for the employees. What kind of party? <laughs> Christmas party. Most places do something for their employees at this time of year. Well, I've given them Christmas Day off. <laughs> Most banks even give a holiday bonus. I've already thought of that. You have? Hmm? Just this morning, I said to myself, Milburn, you've got to give those loyal employees of yours a Christmas bonus. But, Gigi, that's extraordinary. Hmm, I thought so, too. Fortunately, a cold shower brought me to my senses. <laughs> have to pay for your own hauling. Now, now, hold on. Hold on. What, what about the Clampett's truck? Get Jethro on the phone for me. Oh, he'll do this for free. <laughs> That's using the old noodle. 
Hello, Jethro. Jane Hathaway here. Uh, uh, Mr. Drysdale wondered if you could do some, some work for him today. Now, let me talk he... to him. <laughs> Hello, Jethro, my boy. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Say, do you think you could come over and pick up some of my wife's things at my house and take them over to Brentwood for me? Yes, they're for a rummage sale. Oh, good. Yeah, she does need the money. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd be happy to work for you. I, I can use some money myself. Money? <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> yes, my... yes, Jethro. Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> bah, humbug. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jim, Mr. Drysdale hired me to do some work for him. I'm going to earn some Christmas present money. Good boy. You going to get Granny something? No, me! I done got y'all presents. But uh, don't ask me what yours is. I'll give you a hint. It's full of brown sugar and raisins and lots of nuts and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and you can count on it being good. <laughs> Least ways the half I ate was. <laughs> I got it! I got it! You mean you figured out what to give Miss Drysdale? Yeah, shoes. Granny, I told you them was your shoes you were seeing. But it was my potion that showed them to me. It's an omen. Seems a mite far-fetched to me. What you mean? Half the skill of making them potions is knowing where to look for the answers. <laughs> oh, Granny, Miss Drysdale is a-coming. Every time she shows up, it means trouble. Maybe she's just getting a holiday spirit. Now, be nice. You, Mr. Clampett, Granny. Oh, season's greetings, Miss Drysdale. Howdy. Merry Christmas, Miss Drysdale. Felicitations to you all. I was wondering if you were going back to the hills at all for the holidays. Oh, I'm happy to say we're going to stay right here, and we're expecting you and the mister for Christmas dinner, same as always. Oh, how grand. Uh, I'm sure you know that uh, a jet flight will get you back to the hills for the holidays, even at this late date. Well, I don't think we want to... I, I was looking through some magazines this morning, and I noticed these snow scenes. I'm sure you missed the snow back home. Well, uh, to tell you the truth... What uh... a shame to spend the holidays here when a white Christmas is only a jet flight away. Well, these are very pretty, Miss Drysdale. Oh, no, 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 I want you to have them. They are my little Christmas present to you. Little is right. <laughs> she could at least give us a whole magazine. Well, uh, Miss Drysdale, uh, that's very nice here. Why don't you come in and set a spare? Uh, well, I suppose so. Uh, I do have this airline schedule I want to show you. Well, that's fine. You come in and set a spare, and we'll come in and listen in a minute. Now, remember, we got to find out what she wants. Why should we worry what to give her for Christmas when she gives us a sorry gift like this? Two pages tore out of a magazine. Now, Granny, it ain't the gift, it's the thought behind it. The thought behind that would fit on the head of a pin. <laughs> All the more reason to get her what she wants. Now, let's find out what it is. I already told you. Shoes. I know, but just in case, I'm gonna check her teeth. <laughs> you don't care much about fresh goat's milk. How do you feel about goldfish? <laughs> Queasy. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clampett, would you like to look at this timetable? Yes, ma'am, I sure would, ma'am. Now, why don't you board tonight at uh, the 8.13 or the 9.20 this evening? You'd arrive in the morning. How about a white rat or a pet frog? <laughs> or you could leave in the morning and arrive tomorrow afternoon. Is this the kind of heel you're partial to? <laughs> of course, you could wait until midday. Would that be better? You ever thought of wearing store-bought teeth? <laughs> <laughs> it appears to be size five. But if you ask me, you ought to take a seven. <laughs> How come she ran off? Just skittish, I reckon. No, I caught her wearing two smaller shoes. Some folks just won't admit they got big feet. <laughs> Boy, you should have seen Miss Drysdale. She was bouncing along like a buggy with a square wheel. We know that. What am I going to do with this shoe? Well, you ought to give it to Miss Drysdale. She's missing one. Good idea, boy. <laughs> well, you'd feel sorry for her, too, if you knew what she has to do to get her shopping money for Christmas. Well, what you mean, Jethro? She's got to sell off a whole bunch of her things. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Drysdale's ain't lacking for money. Are you sure? Well, Mr. Drysdale told me himself. He hired me to take all this stuff over to Brentwood and sell it. 
said Miss Drysdale needed the money. I've known that man to get into penny pinching moods, but this takes the fuzz off the feet. <laughs> Christmas. I know now why she could only give us a couple of magazine pictures. <laughs> she sure wears funny-looking socks. Appears to be made of sirsa. The <laughs> buttonholes in it. <laughs> so sad. We just got to give this poor woman an extra nice present at Christmas. Yeah, to help her to get having a part with all these pretty clothes. You just hit her on the best present of all. What? These, her very favorite thing. We'll go down to where she's selling them and buy them back for her. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you wrap them and everything. And it's surprising. Oh, Jed, just wait till she opens the boxes on Christmas morning. Yeah, one humdinger of a look on her face. <laughs> these help wanted at is for engineers. Yeah, looks like railroading is a common thing. <laughs> Don't just beat all us trying to find jobs and we got $62 million in the bank. We don't want Mr. Drysdale to find out what we're doing. Well, we better find good paying jobs. Buying back them high-class clothes of Miss Drysdale is gonna cost us a fortune. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Hush, Jethro. He's having trouble finding a job. Oh, well, I already got us some. Why? I asked the fellow over where I took Ms. Drysdale stuff, and he said all the department stores hires lots of extra folks at Christmas time. So I just walked in and got us all work. Well. The fellow said you're in what you call uh, sales personnel. What about you? I've done better than that. I'm going to be Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. How do I sound? <laughs> well, I'm not really Santa Claus. I'm just Santa's help. I asked the little darlings what they want for Christmas. How'd you get a job like that? I'm just filling in for the regular fella. What happened to him? Oh, some kid hit him in the chest with a junior commando toy atomic bomb. <laughs> Blew his beard cleaning the ladies' lingerie. Boy, well, it's real fine you got on helping Santa this way, but uh, ain't you kind of lean through the middle for the job? It's got me worried too, Uncle Jet. I only got three hours to gain 100 pounds. <laughs> I gotta start eating right away, Granny. <laughs> Santa next. Ho, ho, ho. Jethro, I can do them ho, ho, ho's better than you. Let me try being Santa. You dumb old elf. Hey, girls can't be Santa. You look silly in a beard. Besides, it took five fellas and 19 helpings of Granny's grits to get me up to size. Ho, ho, ho. Where did personnel find that Santa Claus? Shouldn't know, sir. The help shortage, you know. The regular man is still suffering from shell shock. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Christmas comes but once a year. <laughs> Thank goodness. And uh, he's not the worst, sir. You should see who's on counter 18. The prices they get for these flimsy things. Why, a skeeter could bite right through that. <laughs> Quit your hollering at Miss Drysdale. You, what are you doing here? Oh, honey, you'll find out soon enough. And that's all I can tell you now. <laughs> you want to buy this? Oh, no. I was just looking. Oh, got your heart set on it, and you can't afford it. <laughs> Where's the manager? I've got to get out of here. <laughs> This way to the nearest exit. Merry Christmas, Miss Drysdale. Granny? Ted, Miss Drysdale was just here. Miss Drysdale? Oh, and it would have liked to broke your heart. She was admiring something I know she didn't have the money for. Well, you should have given it to her. I did. <laughs> and 
two more besides. Good. How you doing here? Well, I ain't exactly setting the woods on fire. What do you sew? Nothing. <laughs> but then this ain't my kind of stuff. What are you selling? Shotguns and rifles over in Sporting Good? Now there's something I could do business with. Let's trade. I don't know, Granny. Uh, what are you selling here? Oh, all kinds of things. Well. You have to do better than me. All right. I know you're all wanting Santa to bring you the X-89 super missile launcher. But if I was you, I'd ask for the surefire plastic aircraft carrier. It's cheaper and a lot more fun. I know. I got one. Excuse me, are you a manager? Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, may I help you? It's about your Santa Claus. Oh, dear. Well, now, 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 if there's been any problem. You see, he's just part-time. Our regular one. I wanted to thank you for him. I've never seen anyone with such rapport with children. It's just as though he had the mind of a seven-year-old. Well, you may be closer than you think. Listen close. I've got another tip for you. You know them socks you hang over the fireplace on Christmas Eve? Yeah. That Santa fills with fruit and candy and stuff? Yeah. Well, this Christmas, have your ma make you up a sock like mine. I mean, like my friend, Jethro Bodine. Then, what you get, if you eat slow, will last you clean through to Easter. <laughs> Mr. Van Hook, I think you better come quick. It's the new salesman on counter 18. Hold it. A salesman in negligees and nightgowns? Don't knock it. He just sold out the entire stock in 20 minutes. <laughs> well, how did you do it? I've never heard of anyone moving merchandise like this before. Oh, shucks, ain't nothing to it when you're giving it away. <laughs> You gave it all away? It is Christmas. Besides, I was just too embarrassed to try and sell them flimsies and the like. You're not going to pay for this. Oh, I plan to. You just call a commerce bank, and they'll tell you I'm good for it. But don't say nothing to Mr. Drysdale. We're doing all this to surprise his wife. What a salesman, huh, Mr. Van Hook? Tate, if you don't shut up, I'll have you pounding a beat in the bargain basement. <laughs> Chief, your wife's on the phone. Tell her I'm at the North Pole. I think you'd better talk to her. She's calling from the city jail. Where? She was picked up for shoplifting in Wrigley's department store. <laughs> and they caught her walking out with three nightgowns in her purse. <laughs> You'll have to quit now. Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale's on their way over. Has Jethro got all Miss Drysdale's clothes ready? Oh, yeah, he must have six bags of Christmas packages up there. I still can't understand why they were selling all of her nice things so cheap. It's a good thing they was, or we wouldn't have had the money to buy them all back. Oh, wait, she gonna be surprised. I just can't, Melbourne. I can't spend Christmas at the Clampets. Would you rather spend it at the jail? You were released in my custody, remember? And the Clampets say they have a surprise for you. Oh, very well. Come in, come in. Season's greetings. Why, what a beautiful tree, Granny. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Directly, we're going into the fancy eating room and have our turkey. But first, Santa Claus has got something for you, Ms. Drysdale. Come on. <laughs> I'm afraid Santa's gonna be a little late this year. I bet she can wait if it means getting a pair of sheer sucker socks. <laughs> well, Jeff, I mean, Santa's climbing out. We might as well eat. It's one little thing first, Ellie. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. <laughs> Well, now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. 
They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.